Uh, John, just in terms of COP26, uh, we will come to some questions uh, in a second. But in terms of COP26, over the past couple of years, especially during the during the lockdowns, we did see a huge amount of ESG stuff getting pushed. So the whole environmental, societal, and governance uh, theme getting brought raised. Uh, and for investors, you know, you need to be dis divesting from fossil fuels, and you need to be investing in green things. We saw huge speculative surges in green technologies. I get the impression that you know this isn't really going to stop. I think COP26 is maybe one of these landmarks where we we see loads of commitment to uh, further battling climate change and effectively funneling loads more money into uh, renewable stuff. Uh, what's your take on how this might actually uh, sort of shape markets in the decade to come? Well, look, I mean, let's look at the world as it is. The fact is there is a huge push and it may be top down. It may be bottom up. It is a combination of both. If you ask me to try and find ways to wean ourselves off of fossil fuel dependency, which of course was the basis for the great industrial revolution and the tremendous progress in prosperity and reduction of poverty that we've seen over the past couple of centuries. But, you know, everyone assumes, and I think it's a fair assumption that, you know, resources are limited, right? I mean, the, the, the second law of thermodynamics, uh, you know, tells us that in a way um, at a level which is universal. And, and so this, this trend has been in place for a long time. And I think there are a lot of good intentions behind it. But what you find when you look at history is that trends, be they top down, bottom up, or some combination of both, which I think this is, they tend to be taken over by those who find ways to exploit them for their own personal benefit. And that's when the corruption sets in. And I, and I actually think we're quite far into that now. And I, and I watch events like this, and I watch what they agree to, and I watch, you know, sort of the deals that are done. And it's, you know, it's palm greasing. Uh, and, and, and so what does it mean for investors? Well, look, if you're an investor, you, you want to make money. You, you want to make returns above and beyond what you would make by just buying the index. And the fact is, right, clearly there is still a consensus at the highest level to throw as much money as possible at these attempts. And they are only attempts because none of them have really worked yet to come up with renewable green technology. So you kind of have to ride the gravy train. Even if the technology in the long run will be shown as not viable, didn't work, cost too much, we're terribly sorry, uh, you know, we whatever, um, you kind of have to be in it. And, and I, I, it's a terrible thing to say, right, when, you, when you're skeptical, as I am, that a lot of this stuff is not going to work out long term. But you kind of have to be in it. Now, that said, some of it might work out. And if you're, if you're genius enough to be able to know... Uh, which of these technologies might actually be truly viable without subsidies from taxpayers longer term. Wow. I mean, that's going to be the greatest investment ever because you're going to get all the subsidies you need along the way to do all the work needed along the way to get to that point. And if you can find those, you're golden. That's the holy grail. Yeah, it's certainly above my pay grade, I think, though it is worth, of course, asking asking the questions about it. I mean, John, do you think, uh, cynical as we are, do you think then uh, a good play or a shrewd play for an investor would be simply to invest in the businesses which are closest to political power in some way? So, you know, the, they've got plenty of uh, politicos on the board. Uh, they've received plenty of subsidies in the past. They've got a good relationship with the people at the Treasury who hand out hand out the green goodies. Is that is that how we should try and find an edge in this market? Well, one of the most fundamental differences, some would argue the most fundamental difference between a relatively free market economy and a relatively socialist centrally planned economy is that in the former, uh, the rewards accrue to competence. And in the latter, the rewards accrue to access. It's just down to who you know. Yeah. And certainly when it comes to this whole climate uh, world that we've entered, it's so dependent on subsidies. It's so dependent on government policy. It's so dependent on bureaucratic processes, which are not profit-driven, not price-driven, but are due to discretion and access to you know whatever elite group you happen to be part of. Um, that is the world we inhabit. And, and so, yes, um, there's I, I hate to say this, but it in the world we currently inhabit, it is a legitimate 
investment strategy to invest in access. And I know that sounds horrible, but, 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 but that's where we are. And we might stay in, yeah. it, we might stay in this place for years.